Order, members, order. The Right Honourable Peter Robinson has been given leave to make a statement on the death of Oscar Knox, which fulfils the criteria set in Standing Order uh, 24. Will there members who should be called? They should do uh, by continually rising in their places. Uh, all members will up to three minutes to speak on the subject matter. Members will know there will be no points of order on any other matter as we deal with this particular issue. And I call the Right Honourable Peter Robinson. Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and of course, the uh, remarks will be about uh, the passing uh, of uh, we Oscar. But uh, I think, in keeping with the, the views expressed by the family, it will be more about a celebration of the life uh, of Oscar Knox. From time to time, we come together in this chamber uh, to mark the, the death of perhaps someone who has given great public service, uh, someone who has. Uh, committed themselves and made some real achievement, whether it's in sport or the, the arts, uh, someone maybe from our, our own number who has uh, passed away. Uh, but in all of those, it's a, a recognition of the, the, the service and achievement of a lifetime that uh, someone has uh, been able to, uh, uh, to, to uh, bring forward. On this occasion, uh, some people might ask, uh, why do we mark uh, the, the passing of a, a five-year-old uh, boy? Uh, and the truth is that for many of us, uh, when we, we go through life, uh, we admire those who show courage uh, in the, the face of uh, suffering, uh, who can smile through pain and discomfort, uh, who, can, uh, who show that they don't lie down uh, when faced with uh, adversity. Uh, and while we all admire that when we see it on, in some individual, when you see it in the, the, the life uh, of a, a young child, it's particularly poignant. Uh, I had the, the pleasure and the honour of uh, meeting uh, Oscar. Uh, this was uh, a young boy who was faced with a very aggressive form of uh, cancer. It brought uh, pain and suffering into his uh, daily life. Uh, it uh, obviously impacted the whole of the family circle uh, and, in effect, he could not have a, a normal life. But absolutely everybody who met him was uh, won over by his personality, uh, by the mischievous innocence uh, of the, the young boy. Uh, he had uh, a way of... Uh, making you smile. You couldn't have been in his presence without smiling. Uh, and when the, the Deputy First Minister and I met him and he turned the office upside uh, down, uh, you would almost be exhausted after he, he left. There was so much uh, energy displayed uh, during that uh, period uh, of time. Uh, and I think it's right that we should uh, honour somebody who has uh, shown such fortitude uh, in the face of uh, adversity, brought so much joy and indeed love uh, to so many uh, people. Uh, it is, of course, sad that he's passed, and I think the words that uh, would have brought uh, tears from any stone uh, were his words in the midst of his suffering when he said that he didn't want to be a boy anymore. Uh, and that indicated that uh, somebody who had fought so hard uh, for so long uh, was uh, suffering so much. So today uh, we pass our Condolences uh, to Stephen, uh, to Leona, and to we Izzy. Uh, people are inclined to forget the role of we Izzy because anybody who has children knows that if uh, one child is getting paid an awful lot of attention, uh, it can affect the, the other child. But Izzy was so much a, a part of it all. She, she recognized the, the difficulties that uh, her, her brother was uh, facing. Uh, and it will be a very difficult time for her uh, in the months uh, and years ahead. So we send our condolences uh, to them. And it is at uh, times like this that uh, I'm inclined, particularly in the death of a child, to remember the exhortation of Christ to his disciples, uh, which also provides a, a promise uh, for those who lose a, a child at such an early age. Suffer little children to come on to me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. 
Gurumogat, Kenna Kuller, can I say first of all thanks to you for uh, taking this uh, matter of the day. Uh, we've just come through uh, a weekend of contrasts, uh, absolutely fantastic zero detail in Belfast with the people of the city, the people of the north, Armagh, Dublin, rising to what was a fantastic world event. A lot of joy, a lot of happiness and good crack. But the contrast was the loss of Oscar Knox. And of course, here today we think of we Oscar, his uh, father Stephen, his mother Leona, and uh, as the First Minister has said, very importantly, uh, we Izzy. Oscar was a, a wonderful and very special little boy at five years of age who had such an impact on all of us. It was Stephen Hawkins that said that we are very small, but that we are profoundly capable of doing many great things. And Oscar Knox was very small, only five years of age, but absolutely profoundly capable of doing many great things. And I think the way in which he united our community, the sight of Rangers fans expressing their support, Glasgow Celtic fans expressing their support, and over the course of the weekend, the messages that went up at the Brandywell and Celtic Park and in many other places, and even last night in Philadelphia, on the steps that Rocky ran up during that famous film, the sight of Irish Americans placing candles with Oscar's name written on the stones was absolutely amazing. The day he came to Parliament buildings was an incredible day, probably one of the most memorable days in the history of this assembly. And it's not an incredible thing to say that a five-year-old could have such an impact on growing men and women. It caused mayhem. He was like an exocet missile running right through the building, and we absolutely loved it. And we loved him, and we loved having Izzy there to run with him, and having Leona and Stephen there also. So I think the message for all of us is very, very clear, and that is that uh, we have to get real about what is important in life. And what is important in life is the future. What is important in life is our children. And uh, Oscar was an exceptionally gifted little boy that he had the capabilities to bring people together from a wide spectrum of our society. And if we're to learn any lessons from that, then the lesson that has to be learned is that we have to be more united, because Oscar was a unifier. It's heartbreaking to me to look at that photograph of him standing on my desk with his little arm around the First Minister's shoulder and my shoulder, because that sends a message, you know, I depend on you guys. And I think all of our children who are out there depend on all of us. So we have to rise for the occasion, for the sake of our children and for the sake of Oscar. I was very, very proud to know him. And yesterday when I attended his uh, Mass for the Angels, uh, as we left the church, we were handed uh, seeds of his uh, favorite flower, sunflowers, and I went home to my house and planted them in the front garden. So uh, we will never forget him. Mr. Mugget. Hey, Joe Mr. Speaker, I too, like the First Minister and Deputy First Minister, would like to express my party's sympathy to the family of Stephen and Leona Knox and Sister Izzy of We Oscar. Uh, Leona's family come from Castlederg and I've known them for a long time. And uh, it was a very moving service yesterday in St. Bernard's Church, Glengarmory, where Father Damien McCahan very much reflected the life and the experience of little Oscar. He was someone who created great inspiration uh, in terms of the wider public. And the Knox family and the McMenamin family are to be congratulated on the big social media campaign that they've conducted over the last two to three years in relation to fundraising to carry out research for this very rare cancer sickness that affects children. Mr. Speaker, 
like others, we have all been moved by the character and the gaiety of little Oscar, the courage he showed and demonstrated in relation to dealing with this sickness. And uh, we hope that in the days ahead that the two families, the Knox family and the McMenamin family, will take some sucker from the wider public support that they have been gendered and uh, gotten in recent times. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Joanne Dobson. Mrs. Dobson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oscar Knox was Northern Ireland's wee superhero. And I know that I join all members in this House when I say that it was with deep sadness that I heard in the words of Stephen and Leona that Oscar gained his angel wings on Thursday evening. And Northern Ireland shed a tear for one of its own. In his five short years, Oscar did so much for everyone else. He helped people who never got the opportunity to meet him. A five-year-old who united and captivated Northern Ireland with his sheer zest for life, teaching us the real values of love and compassion. He was symbolic of all children who fight hard against their terminal illness, the public face of countless children who suffer in silence. But as Oscar's illness returned, Northern Ireland held its breath, hoping against hope that he would pull through. I know what it's like to have an ill child, to sit in hospital waiting on those results of endless tests, holding your breath tight in hope and in love. It also changed your focus on what's important in life. And as parents across Northern Ireland tucked their children in last night, they paused and held them that little bit longer, saying an extra prayer for a brave little boy called home to God. Oscar's favourite film was Peter Pan, and members, I think it's poignant to think today of those angel wings and a little boy who will never get the chance to grow up. Oscar epitomised all that is good in Northern Ireland. And Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party, our thoughts and prayers are with Leona, Stephen, Izzy and the entire family circle today and in the days that lie ahead. As they face each new morning without their beloved Oscar, they should know in their hearts that Northern Ireland will never forget him. Oscar's le legacy of love will live on. Thank you. Uh, David Ford. Mr Ford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I also add my condolences and sympathy to Oscar's family, because it's absolutely clear from what's being said in this chamber this morning that he didn't just touch the lives of his immediate family in the family circle or the neighbours in Belosk or the parishioners in St. Bernard's. He touched the lives of people right across Northern Ireland by his cheerfulness, by the way he responded to his difficulties, by the way he was literally the person who could stand between the First Minister and Deputy First Minister and cause mayhem, possibly even on a scale that's not normally achieved in this building. So it was no surprise to see the tributes and the turnouts yesterday as people celebrated his life, because it was, as his parents wanted, a celebration of a life. But it was also a reminder to us that whilst Oscar was unique in some ways, he was certainly unique to Stephen and Leona, he was certainly unique to Easy. But he was not unique in the context that there are other children in this society also facing life-limiting illnesses. There's a children's hospice on the edge of North Belfast and Glengormley, which has other children in it facing similar difficulties. And it is, as has been said already, something which should be reminded to all of us about what is really important in life, about what should really concern us. And some of the squabbles which go on in this chamber are a little unedifying when we stand this morning and pay tribute to a five-year-old who could actually set an example to all of us. So let's remember those who cared for Oscar because he was cared for well by his family and by so many professionals. And let's remember that with gratitude. Let's remember the way he was able to live his five years to the full. Let's also remember those others who suffer in a similar way who also need our support. And let's remember his example and ensure that we do meet the needs of the people of Northern Ireland in full in this chamber and provide the leadership that we were shown by a five-year-old. Uh, Stephen Agnew. Mr Agnew. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I rise on behalf of 
the Green Party Northern Ireland to express our condolences to Oscar's family on his, his, his sad passing. But in the wishes of the family as well, I'd like to, to, to celebrate Oscar's life. We often use the phrase, you're one in a million. But for a child such as Oscar, Oscar to be diagnosed with Jacobs, Jacobson syndrome, um, which uh, affects approximately one in 100,000 children, um, and also uh, the particular form of cancer, high-risk neuroblastoma, which also affects one in 100,000. Little Oscar was, in fact, one in 10 billion. And I think that's displayed itself in the, the affection um, across Northern Ireland and indeed across the world um, from people who followed Oscar's story, followed him through his illness, um, and indeed followed his, 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 his many kind of exploits um, in the short time he had, he had with us. As a father of a five-year-old son, um, I know how much joy and how much work uh, children of that, that age can be, and I know um, that uh, Oscar's family will have made the most of, of that time, um, knowing that, that, that Oscar's time would be short. And indeed, as has been pointed out, he packed a lot in to those, those short years, and indeed, the achievements have been mentioned, and one of them, um, you know, he's achieved many things. I mean, meeting our own first and deputy first minister, and as has been said, bringing them together in common cause, but also leading out his beloved Celtic um, at, uh, in, a, in a European uh, championship qualifier. So uh, there are certainly happy memories for the family um, to, to, to look back on and to take comfort in. And I'd like to echo um, some of the comments of, of, of Mr Ford in um, paying credit to the Children's Hospice. And um, we've seen that they've seen an increase in donations and the publicity around Oscar and the public profile has helped um, uh, bring contributions uh, to, to, to their work. Because unfortunately, there are many sick children in our society. And it's uh, important that we do everything we can to help and support them. And I'd also like to pay tribute to the Royal Belfast Hospital for Sick Children, who, um, when my own sister was a child, uh, saved her life. And I know they, 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 they've done all they can um, to, to treat Oscar um, and to, to support his family. And they do do excellent work there. It must be an extremely difficult job working with uh, severely sick children. I'd like to commend them for their work. And uh, finally, just uh, for, for, for little Lissy, as has, has been said, um, tough time for all the family, but it's important that, um, that, that her life um, is maximised to the fullest and um, that, that uh, further joy will be brought to the family from her life. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I, I rise as a, a resident of Glengormley. And I have to say, within Glengormley, I wouldn't imagine there would be a single person living there that doesn't know the name of Oscar Knox. You only had to travel around Glengormley, whether it was going to the Chippy, whether it was going to the, the local news agents in the bottom of, bottom of Carmody Road, and you saw the, the boxes fundraising for Oscar Knox. And uh, <clears throat> on Saturday, we had the Giro, and the streets were lined in Glengormley, cheering and waving the Giro on. And then again, yesterday morning, where streets were lined again um, to remember Oscar and what a shining light he was. And yesterday, Mr Speaker, I myself said goodbye to my own son at the airport yesterday morning, who's embarking on a new life and a new career. And last night, I, I sat in my back garden, and I had such happy memories of, of the home that we have. I remember 24 years ago buying my house of a couple, a lovely couple called Bran and Susie Knox. And they had this lovely son, Stephen, who played in that same garden that my son played in. And as I sat there last night, just before 10 o'clock, the skies in Glengormley were filled with lanterns. And it was such a beautiful evening. It was so still and so peaceful. And I just thought, what a fitting memorial to see all those lovely bright lights up in that sky, just remembering we Oscar. So on behalf of all the residents of Glengormley, I can say that our thoughts and our prayers are with Stephen and Leona and, and his sister and his grandparents and all of the family. And we wish them all you know, well and, and we wish them hope in the future as well and that they know that we Oscar's bright shining light will go on forever. 
Alwyn McGuinness. Mr McGuinness. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, I want to pay tribute uh, to the family and friends of Oscar Knox and the family who made a moving and fitting tribute uh, to their beloved Oscar at the Mass of the Angels in St Bernard's Glengormley yesterday. Oscar's uh, brave battle with uh, neuroblastoma, an aggressive and rare form of cam cancer, captured the hearts of the public. He brought together people from all communities and was a beacon of real hope. For families who have a sick child, he offered hope and inspiration and has given them tremendous courage. As Father Damien McCahan said at his funeral mass, by being an ordinary boy and staying ordinary, even in the midst of his illnesses, he inspired others to do extraordinary acts of love. Oscar's innocence, or as the First Minister has said, his mischievous innocence, and his gentle nature helped to unite people across Northern Ireland and indeed the world. If we want his legacy to live on, then we must, in our ordinary lives, try and have an extraordinary impact for good. Oscar's family, and particularly his parents, Stephen and Leona, must be experiencing a great deal of real pain at this time. I'm sure that the outpouring of sympathy from the public, and indeed from this assembly, will be a great comfort through this most difficult of times. Many hearts were touched yesterday evening when Belfast City Hall was lit up teal and yellow, the colours used during the Oscar Knox appeal. This reminds us that Oscar's legacy lives on and continues to touch people. The sky across Belfast was lit up yesterday evening with lanterns and in homes across the north. Families lit candles to remember the short but very special life of this remarkable and courageous little boy. According to Edith Wharton, there are two ways of spreading light, to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. Oscar's light, Mr. Speaker, will continue to shine, and we all have a duty to make sure that it does. Thank you. Order, members. Order that concludes this item of business.